Hi, I'm David from David Christopher's and I'm here again with a how-to video. Um, one thing that people have asked us for recently is how to make um, tomb clips for the cemetery. So we have had people ask us about kits to do their own since they're at home and everybody's feeling crafty right now. So we are going to show you how we put those together with as minimal supplies as possible. So the first thing we do is we're going to take our tomb clip and our spray bar that fits perfectly on that. I dip a little bit of that in the glue because we just kind of overdo it. And then that basically just hammered in to the styrofoam. Uh, so that shouldn't come off, but we actually have these, these things called Dixon pins that are a metal clip with two wooden pieces that we also add on there just to make sure, give it a little extra security. And so we'll put those on there. And when you, if you order a wreath kit, I mean a tomb clip kit from us, we're actually gonna send this to you like this so you don't have to put that part together. Um, so that will come to you just like this, ready to go. And you may have to adjust your clip a little bit just in case the metal's off. Now these are leather fern bundles. These are already separated individually, so you do not have to cut these, but wire cutters will be needed for the rest of the flowers that we're gonna add. But these are individual pieces, and they come 12 in a bundle. So what we're gonna do, <coughs> is we're gonna start on the ends and we're gonna glue those just a little bit. Now, if you do not have glue and you need something very long, you can always use what we send with one of these is a wood pick. And you just spin that copper wire on and that will not let go easily. And you can add that in and the wood holds really well into the styrofoam so keep that in mind um, if you do not have a glue gun although i do recommend that you use a glue gun for this unless you have an electric skillet at home for yourself to use five pounds of glue a day which most of you probably do not so after we've done our ends we're going to really just fill that in and every time I place one in, I bend it out because we want everything to have a nice natural curve to it. God did not make things that were completely straight in nature. Most everything has a little bit of a curve to it. Trees and leaves, branches and such are usually have some movement to them, not completely straight. So let's bend those down a little bit. That's also going to hide our frame. Uh, when we get finished with this. So we're just going to continue around. That's 12 pieces. That covers our base completely. Now for the next group, we're going to cut this and I'll show you where I cut it. These actually have little barbs on the plastic that will allow it to hold better in the styrofoam without gluing, but I glue it anyway. And then we're going to add these pieces in between every piece that we just put in. So a total of 24 pieces go in the base. Uh, you do one row and you do another row on top of it that's a little bit shorter and that will pretty much hide all of our frame. It does not hide the styrofoam on top but we will hide that with the rest of the flowers and the other foliage that we'll add in. So for all those people that are, are bored right now, you can always make your own. We're trying to give you a little bit of content to burn through along with your Netflix binges. And I'll try to do this as quickly as possible, but you can slow it down if you need to. So now our base is really covered because this is going to go like this. So we don't want this to be out like flat so that you see the frame. You want to be able to hide the frame completely. And that just kind of 
mushroom shapes over the frame and hides everything there. Now we've got a few flowers. Uh, we actually got quite a few. We've got lilies. We've got this pom pom allium, some daisies, hydrangeas, but we also have forsythia. So what I like to do when I do these is I like to start with my longest pieces first. Now I know that may be weird to some of you people, but I, that's just the way I do it. Um, so we're going to cut those as long as we possibly can off of the bush. And then you'll notice that this actually has three pieces and I want to use all three pieces individually. So we are going to need to glue this in. And I'm going to use a couple of pieces on the ends and a couple of pieces in the middle. But you see how long these pieces are. So we're gonna put those in first. And you don't have to be exact with it, but usually what you're gonna to wanna to do is go from end to end, front and back. So you're actually looking at what I'm looking at would be considered the back side, but the back side will, for the most part, duplicate the front side. So I've got one in the middle here and I really want to put another one but I won't want them the same height so I'm going to cut this one down. I'm going to cut up a couple inches off of it so that I make it just a little bit lower because that looks more natural. You don't want things perfectly even. Um, and then we're going to continue with our forsythia here and we're going to cut this down a little bit shorter and we're going to go in between so i've got these two pieces i'm going to go in between at a different height and then same thing on this side i'm going to go in between those same thing here and just bend that just a little bit just remember every time you place something give it a little bit of a curve I don't want it to look boring, not lifelike. So I've got two longer pieces for my last section and I'm going to cut those down a little bit and go underneath those pieces that I just placed because I want to add a little bit of yellow, a little bit more yellow to the base. Color balance is extremely important. Is a thing that people will notice from the farthest away. Okay, so we've got our forsythia in there, and it's to me it is important to make sure I've used all of something before I move on because I want to make sure that it looks good at every stage. So that stage is done. Now my lilies are fairly tall, so I'm going to take my lilies, cut them apart. Make sure you do not cut your fingers, it is not fun. And then I actually have some places where my lilies join. Right here you can see that it's it's got a lily here and a lily here. And for some of those, I want to separate. So I'm going to cut right there to where I get the longest stem off of this one and the longest stem off of this one. And then we want this to be somewhat in between. The lilies and the hydrangeas will serve as a bit of a focal flower, so we want those to be out from the tune clip but also in the center. So we're going to use some of the longer pieces like this one. We're going to use out from our clip here. And I will show you what that's going to look like. So out on this corner, we're going to have some lily. We're going to cut this one a little bit shorter and place it more toward the center. And then use this one. This one's going to be a little bit taller. It is important to have different heights. So you notice I have two lilies at this height 
two lilies at this height, two lilies on the ends, and then I really just want to fill in a little bit. This one ended up being a little bit short, so I'm going to add my wood pick that will allow me to extend the length of this lily just a little bit. And I'm going to put it in that corner. So this one's going to be a little too long. I'm going to put it, I cut it down so I can put it opposing the one I just placed in that corner. And then that's going to leave me with one and I'm just going to stick it in a little bit shorter here because I think it looks good to have different variations in height. The more three dimensional you can make it, the more natural it's going to appear. And as you're doing this, you're going to get some glue on some different things. Don't worry about that. Just save those to the end. It bothers me, but um, we'll, uh, we'll just save those for later. Now we're going to cut our pom-pom allium part because you want to use things individually instead of as an entire bush together. Um, we're going to put a couple of taller stems toward the middle. But just cut them as long as you can when you're taking them off the, the bush where they're molded together because you can always cut them down. But you can't add as much to them as you can cut them down. Uh, and really at this point, we're just going to be a little bit in between our lilies and forsythia that we've already placed in here. Filling in some of that negative space. But every time you finish with a flower, you want to go, yeah, my colors are balanced pretty evenly throughout the piece, front, back, side to side, so that you can feel good that you're, you're finished with that and you don't have to adjust anything. So you notice I get a little bit of the green on the ends and to the middle. Um, so we're, we're balanced there. Now we're going to take our, our uh, hydrangea bush. Now hydrangea is going to be a little bit trickier because there are only five large blooms. Uh, so it is a little bit more difficult to balance the colors with this hydrangea because you have five blooms. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and get some toward the ends and just bend those up a little bit so that you can really see the, the bloom. I'm going to put one toward the front. Um, so really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to put three in. And then I'm going to split in between those the other two a little bit closer in. So, we, and I've got one extra piece of hydrangea foliage. I'll just add it in. You can always, you can never have too much foliage. Always add your foliage pieces in if you cut some off that are nice, especially like hydrangea leaves cover a lot of space. So at this point, really all we have is a little empty space here and there, but we do still have our daisy bush that we can cut up. So you can either choose at this point if you want to make sure you're going to fill all the space up, you can take your, your leather fern pieces and you can go ahead and start filling in all those gaps. So we're gonna cut that short and then we're gonna bend it out every time we, we place it. So you notice it's sticking pretty much straight up. We're gonna bend it down and curve it so that it hides more of the piece, the space that we're trying to cover up there. And there should be plenty of this in your kit to just fill in all that. 
empty space. And we're just going to keep adding. Keep adding. Don't worry if you feel like you're overlapping some of this. Sometimes that's a little bit necessary. And it won't really hurt anything because we're going to go back and add our daisies on top of this. So really, at this point, I dropped one. I have used 36 individual stems of this leather fern. And we're pretty close to uh, filled in everywhere with our foliages, but we like to send a little extra in the box just in case you're not quite as ready for uh, bending it all the way down because you might have a little extra space to fill in if you don't bend it correctly. So at this point, we're going to fill in some of those spaces that we left with just the fern showing. And so this little daisy bush is what we would consider a filler flower. Just something light and sparse but it gives you a little pop of color just to fill in some of that space. And I'm trying to do this um, while you're looking at it from that side so that you can see where I'm placing some of these. Just remember to continue to color balance everything as you go. You don't want all of the daisy in one place and on one side of your piece because then it looks very off balance. Just a few more. So after you get to this point, we're just going to look and see is there anything else that really, do we need any more fern anywhere? There might be a couple of places, but um, for the most part, you're, you're pretty finished at this point. We're just going to fill in a couple of small little spaces and you can make any minor adjustments if you need to bend something to a different direction, uh, just like like here, I'm going to bend this daisy down just a little bit more to fill in this, this space. And I've got a couple of spots. I want to add another piece of fern, maybe two or three, and then I am finished with this. And just remember to completely bend your fern also. All right. So we are pretty much finished with it. And you can see kind of all the way around, we've got our colors, we've got our, our balance, and um, this would be really ready to go out and, um, and place it the grave. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, check out davidchristophers.com for uh, all of your kits that you could possibly need.